The Google Gang Podcast. <laughs> So what's the name of your dog, Donald? Her dog is called Amber. She after. is a chug. She's named after a traffic light. Oh, a yeah. specific traffic light or just uh, when traffic we, lights in general? When I went to pick her up, like I'd already paid for her, but I hadn't picked a name for her. So um, me and the XXX were trying to decide names. And as I was pulling up to the traffic light, I went, oh, fucking hell, it's just gone Amber. And I went, Amber, that's a good name for a pug. So before that, we, I tried to convince her that we should call her Minjita. Which I said was a, an Indian goddess, but a minji uh, is a slang term for a lesbian. So, <laughs> so you're gonna have a lesbian pug. Well, I don't know how she would go eating minge with the squashed face. No, no, no she'd have a good go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's also racist, highly racist. Really? Yeah. What racist doesn't she like? Uh, anybody who's not white. She barks at <laughs> Whoa. Like most of my non-white friends. Is that why when we're outside, the girl? Yeah. Oh, really? And the girl yeah. was terrified of her yeah. as well. Yeah, the girl reacted like a fucking moron. Though. Yeah. But, yeah, you could see her partner was just, like, walking behind her laughing. Yeah. It's like, mate, it's, like, fucking two inches long. What's it's it going to do to you? It's a tiny pug just I've, making a lot of noise. I've seen more aggressive tapeworms. Is it because <laughs> Is it because of where you're from? Like, are you from kind of racist area? No, no, no. no, no. So, well, to be fair, when I grew up, uh, there weren't many non-white people. Okay. But, um... Yeah, uh, nowadays, you know, it's fine. I think everywhere's the same now, isn't it? I think everywhere's got something of everything. <clears throat> well, what I found interesting is when we went to Blackburn to do a gig. I've heard about this fucker. Yeah, and the yeah. bloke in the audience yelled, ban the burqa, and they've got one of the highest concentrations of Muslims out of any town in the north. I think this is the problem, though, because I think, literally, if, if you've all of a sudden had this thrust upon you, because it, it's only like over the past 50 or so years, isn't it? Mm. I think if you've had it thrust upon you, then you get very, very protective and like, fucking no, no, yep. this is mine. No. Ban the Burkers, ban yeah. the Burkers, get them out, get yeah. them out. You know, if you take that recording out of context. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I seem I'm very... sampling that and putting it on my fucking podcast. I'm having an imaginary podcast with you. It's like, Matt is sure, what, how do you feel Matty about Shaw's... every minority? Ban the Burkers! Yeah. Okay. Matty Shaw's extreme racist views. <laughs> um, your podcast is far looser than this podcast. Oh. Do you actually do it in a caravan? No, no, no. I do it wherever. Like, I've recorded it in a car, in a park. I've in a record- park? Yeah, I did one at the back of Hot Water Comedy Club. Oh, my week. gosh. Yeah. I'll just fucking do it anywhere. I don't care. So, and, like, we don't have a, a plan. I, I tell them they've got to have 20 minutes on a subject, and then I don't talk about the subject just to fucking wind them up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, even, it's not even your podcast. It's Mr. Badger's it's Mr. podcast. Mr. Badger's podcast. Yeah, and yeah. Mr. Badger's career has been going sensationally recently. Oh, man. It's going really, really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots, of, lots of paid work at the moment. So that's, that's good. good. Yeah. That is good. And you've also got another character, the Penguin. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. I haven't seen yet. I've just heard about. Well, I, oh, I don't know whether to do a bit of it tonight. At your I gig. want you to do. I've put you on the set list as the penguin. Cool, because I've I've got all the shit in my car. I've got Mr. Badger stuff and the penguin stuff in my car. So I was where like, did the penguin come from? Why why well, get another character? Puns are shit jokes, aren't they? Yes. So if Mr. Badger does them, it won't work. If I do them, because I tend to do like long rambling stories about actual stuff that's happened to me in my life, it wouldn't work. So what I thought was, I'll just take the word pun slap it into another animal costume, dress up like a dickhead and get cheap laughs by doing that and just do really, really crap puns about being a penguin. And yeah. <laughs> about the puns are just to do with being yeah. a penguin? Yeah, about like living at the fucking... I, I don't even know if they live North or South Pole, but I say North Pole. <laughs> fucking, I th- actually, I think Isn't they are Santa South Pole Santa at boast. the North Pole? I fucking... I, he's not real, mate. What? <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, Santa's fake. He's it's... coming here with a bloody dog with a middle-aged woman's name telling me that <laughs> Santa's not real, man. I'm not buying this bullshit. Oh, fuck. Fuck it out. Um, so, what has, been, uh, what has been happening with your life? Um, your world got turned upside down recently. Like the Fresh um, Prince of Bel-Air. It was uh, yeah. fucked, fuck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, well, we'll start it from the very start. Was the first thing that happened that your mum passed away? Yeah, yeah. So, well, the first thing was December the 16th. Uh, mm. I got a phone call saying she was going into hospital. And when I got in... Got, my dad was sort of like, oh, you know, she's had a stroke, blah, 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 blah. 
Uh, was he I, that blasé about it? My, my dad's got dementia, so he's not. Okay. Yeah, he's not a hundred percent clued up. Like even after she died, he didn't really understand what was going on. Yeah. But um, I got a phone call. Went to the hospital to see my mum, and they were like, "Look, just that you know, she's not coming out." And I was like, "Oh right, so she's just going to be permanently in hospital?" Like, no, no, she's probably not going to last too much longer. So Christmas was a bit shit. Yeah. And then uh, January the eleventh, just got a phone call saying that she died. Really? So yeah, that was shit. But then uh, after that, on the 20th, my missus left me, so... For nine days after your mum passed away, your yeah. girlfriend of how long? Two, well, just over two years. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't you like a long-term together, girlfriend. together though, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like not a bad thing, it's just, uh, you know, where it's, you're more like mates than like a relationship, so she just said, I'm really sorry, I can't do this. And I went, yeah, 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 it's fine, I understand. But it's just, uh, yeah, put me in a little bit of a spiral. But I'm, I'm coming out the other side now. I'm doing all right. That's good. Well, you... well, I've constantly got the fucking dog with me. It's like a little support dog. <clears throat> yeah, your yeah. emotional support dog. Yeah. Well, but... you can bring the dog to the gig tonight. That's fine. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. There we go. I'll take her on stage with me. It'll be a talking point, won't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> I guess. I mean, the dog's not going to do an awful lot of talking. She'll bark the fuck out of any non-white people in the audience. So. Yeah, we do have quite a diverse audience. Maybe it's not the best. No, fuck it. We'll have a racist dog section. <laughs> It'd be like Bernard Manning in dog form. <laughs> what we could do, let's workshop this. We'll we'll put the dog out the back. We'll come out and you can be like very diverse crowd here tonight. I've got a racist dog out the back. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't believe me, you know I'm going to bring her out now. Yeah. And be like, if she barks at you, you've got to get out. But yeah. she, Brexit's coming fast. <laughs> you must stay. I should rename her Brexit. And she's Brexit the one who decides who goes and who stays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she looks at you with uh, an a, a yeah. anger in her eyes. <laughs> what's your um, What's your opinions on what's going to happen to this country? Has, oh. it, has it Has it gone to the dogs? I, gen- I don't think it matters either way. Because there are countries that sort of support themselves, there are countries in the European Union. I think the European Union is taking the piss, but I also think our stance on it is absolutely fucking atrocious. Like we want everything and we're willing to give nothing back. Mm. So I think it's probably, I don't agree with what's happening, but I think it's the best for us as a country because we're so fucking pig-headed. Mm. So I think, yeah, we deserve what we're going to get and we're going to deal with it and it will work. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're not growing up like fucking Somalia or something, just shooting each other for a can of beans. It's like, you know, <laughs> we're going to be all right. I think people are panicking far too much about it. Do you really think you're going to be all right? Though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll because be the problem is, is that you don't produce enough food and resources to keep this nation running. No, nah, but we'll strike up trade deals. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it'll be cool. People are just panicking and scaremongering. Because, and a lot of it is... Um, you find the richest people are the ones saying they want to leave Europe so they know they can make more money. If rich people have got smart people behind them, so they would be saying, fuck, no, 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 let's stay in Europe. If rich people want to leave, they know they can make more money. But the and rich stay in the UK too. Why don't the rich always fuck over the poor though? Because that's the way it works, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in that? Mate, I'm fucking scratter. I, I'm <laughs> poor as fuck. I grew up in a council estate, you know, and... Uh, Fucking hell. I remember Christmas is we didn't have presents and I genuinely thought that there's a charity called Bernardo's but I thought it was a guy called Mr. Bernardo and he'd come round with like two big black bin bags of fucking clothes and just put them on the floor and me and my brother would have to fight over which clothes we wanted. So uh, yeah, that was Really? Yeah, yeah, that's my background. I came I was that poor. I didn't have a school uniform. Uh, I had to like, eventually get given a school uniform. And it was, I always remember, uh, it had a girl's name in the back, it said Tracy in the fucking label. So for years I was called Tracy at school. So, yeah, <laughs> fucking, so now I, I, I've done well, I, I own my own house now, and yeah, I don't worry about money and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I definitely consider myself working class. And, yeah, Good. So what did, your, what did your parents do growing up? Fuck all. Right, no, the all benefits fuck. or? Yep, yep. Uh, Mum... To be fair, had two part-time jobs. My dad was a school caretaker, but that was only part-time. And he used to say that he was in bands, which would be his money. He's like, yeah, 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 I'll play in bands, blah, blah, blah. But he'd basically get paid in beer, or if he did get paid in cash, he'd just piss it up the wall anyway. Mm. Uh, my mum, again, was just getting a pittance, really. And then eventually, my mum got osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. So it was like, all right, well, I'm disabled now. And there's me, like, little Mr. fucking ball of energy going, well, you could work if you want, Mum. 
So, yeah. No, 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 I can't, I can't. So she started claiming disability. My dad became her carer, even though he did fuck all around the house. And then my dad got a really bad back, so he was registered disabled as well. And that was it. They just lived on benefits for the rest of their life. So That's unbelievable. It's fucking it's shit, mate. And that is part of the problem with the UK, is that we're full of lazy shits that don't want to do anything and want money for nothing. And the government will go, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like you just like pump it some fucking backwards. kids and everybody else will pay for you. Yeah. So that's why I'm quite hopeful about Brexit. I think it will kick a few things in shape. Like already the NHS, I love the NHS, but it's a piss take. You got yeah. people going getting like free boob jobs because they feel a bit depressed. It's like, well, I'm really sorry, mate. You know, there's, it should be like for emergency care, like, you know, end yeah. of life care and shit like that. It's not for people who've got a funny looking nose <laughs> I think I said on a podcast recently I can't even remember if it was my own I've been guesting on a few but the people in this country are going to get a rude awakening yes. when they tighten the reins on the NHS yeah. and you have to start because in Australia now for a Medicare right which is the equivalent of NHS you have to pay seven Australian dollars to see a doctor yeah. Right? yeah so you pay a small amount it's a cheap little amount seven dollars it's about four pounds you know? yeah not an awful lot, but it's not a free doctor's visit. You're no. paying for it. It gives a value because GPs are just being taken advantage. Oh, yeah. And people are just rocking in just to have a laugh, you know, yeah. just to fill in the day. Oh, the I'm amount of the people, who, you'll go there and you've got like, I know you shouldn't go if you've got flu or anything, but let's just say, I don't know, you, you fucking badly sprained your ankle and you go to the doctor to get it checked out and you're just sat in a waiting room full of pensioners and single mums and little scummy kids that have got nothing fucking wrong with them. They just want to waste everybody's time. And hey, Michael's got a cough. Well, so fu- what's the doctor going to do? Mm. Fucking go back home, get some cough medicine. Mm. Go to a, go to fucking Boots. They've got people trained in there to go. Your kid needs this. Mm. But yeah, so yeah, it does. It needs a good kick up the ass. I'm quite glad that that's coming. Really mm. Mm. interesting. What is it? What is it like? The the, the energy where you live. The um, energy in 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 Shropshire. Scottish power, I think. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Are you doing like fucking Reiki healing and shit? Like that? <laughs> so what's going no, on? but like, I mean, what is like the feeling towards Brexit in your area? Um, right. So I live in. I I am not conservative. I'm I'm nothing. I no political sway at all. But I live in a highly conservative area. It's basically like farmers and quite well-to-do landowners. And uh, I think that they're quite looking forward to it. But at the same time, I don't think that the people there understand the impact it's going to have on them. Because like, there's a lot of migrant workers that work on the farms and things like that. Mm. So while they're saying, oh, we need to fuck these people back off to their own country, make Britain fucking Britain again. Yeah. You're going, yeah, well, you're not going to get people that are willing to pick potatoes for fucking minimum wage, mate. So be prepared to have your <laughs> fucking dick blasted yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be good fun watching Pink all these potatoes for two quid of a mm. dick sack like. <laughs> like genuinely um, I knew like quite a few uh, South African guys that were doing things like potato picking and it'd be less than minimum wage because they'd be paying them minimum wage per hour but instead of doing an 8 hour day they're doing a 12 hour day and it's like well you fucking work until I tell you you're finished and it'd be like a minibus that would pick them up and drop them off so they've got no control. You know, they can't leave. If they want to leave, they've got to walk fucking 14 miles back home or whatever. And then you don't get employed again. So um, No way. Yeah, it's like my dog's just going nuts. Proper slave labour yep. in this country. Whereas in Australia, we we get British citizens in our little slave labour programme for them to stay in the country longer. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you want to stay another year, you better start picking strawberries, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You know, but at Australia, least we pay more, right? Australia have got the correct idea. Like my ex girlfriend used to live and work in Australia, and she said she'd go back there tomorrow if she could. Mm. But it's just getting work over there. Mm, yeah, mm. she worked on the uh, not immigration. What's it called? Where you, you stop like different wildlife and plants and like animals and stuff coming into the country. I don't know what it's fucking called, mate. Um, biosecurity. Something like that. Yeah. Is it biosecurity camp? Does it just border control? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. You like check people's shoes for seeds and shit. That's it, yeah. yeah. Like, you'd have like, um, I, I don't want to say racist, but you'd have like Indian families coming over. With like With all their own, of food, yeah, yeah, their own fish stuff. and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She said like she'd have to like confiscate it all and try and explain why you couldn't fucking yeah, do that. Yeah, you can't bring that shit here, mate. Yeah. Not going to fly. So are you thinking <laughs> that you are going to stay in England forever or do you want to, are you looking at an escape route? Do you want to get out of here? I, I would love to live somewhere else but like um, 
I'm fucking shit at new places. So like, mm. I moved out of Whitchurch, Shropshire, which is like cap of ten thousand people. Moved out of that to Wrexham for six and a half years. Didn't leave the house. I just had panic attacks all the time, and that like Wrexham's tiny. Mm. So imagine just one Wrexham's day going. Wrexham's a place that no one wants. Oh, it's fucking scum, dude. <laughs> but um, imagine just one day going to that guy. We want you to leave Whitchurch and fuck off abroad where nobody speaks English and you're going to be on your own. I couldn't do it. Mm. So I think I'm, I don't want to be, but I think I'm stuck in at least the UK for the rest of my life, which is, <laughs> oh man, it's horrible. It's self-imposed. Fucking is. And it's, again, it's another indictment of the uh, UK school system where you don't get, you don't really have to learn a language because they expect the rest of the world to fucking know English. Mm-hmm. So whenever you go on holiday, it's like, oh, they'll speak English, don't worry about it. And now this shit's happening where you've got loads of people wanting to leave the UK and make a better life for themselves before it all goes tits up. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I'm sorry, mate. You... <laughs> where can you go? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? You're gonna and no one's going to want to teach you either. No one's going to no, want to no. be patient with you. Because even like, <clears throat> if you've got a British accent and you're travelling around Europe now, yeah, they're not they're not bending over backwards to be we, your mate anymore. We are hated. Yeah. Like, well, you look at that. It sounds really pathetic. Did you used to watch the Eurovision Song Contest? I have seen it. Yeah, and no matter if we put in somebody shit or somebody ace, it's like nil poids, because the rest of the fucking world hates us. They don't want us to even win a shit song contest. <laughs> 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 you know, fucking hell. They don't, they're definitely not going to try and help us out if we're stuck Australia back did really well one year, I think. How is Australia in the Eurovision Song Contest? I don't know. We were. We had Jess Mailboy in there, didn't we? I think we did. Jess Mowboy, she's an indigenous Australian singer. Oh, like she's Aborigine? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's very, very pretty. You can't say Aborigine anymore. You can't say Aborigine? No, you say indigenous Australian. Why, why, what's, what's the deal with that? Like, I can't quite remember. No. I think it's just considered racist. Yeah. It's, so <laughs> saying Aborigine is racist? Yeah. Holy we shit. made it up. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. it's not. Indigenous is original. In, indigenous is like the indigenous well, people. That's, to me, like I thought Aborigine w- was like a word, i.e., you know, because it doesn't sound like an English word, does it, if you know what it's I mean? Probably, yeah, it's like almost probably the English equivalent of what they would consider themselves, but then it's also like we probably made them think of something. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know, whereas indigenous... And it was also shortened to abo, which is basically ah, like using yeah. the N-word. Yeah, or the um, P-word, like, yeah. What's the P-word? Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's not really yeah. a big thing in Australia. No, no, but that's <laughs> genuinely around here. Like, it, it's a weird one. It's like, uh, people can say, oh, well, it's a shortened version of Pakistani, but it's still seen as a derogatory term. Yeah, because so how many people it. from Pakistan are actually here? Because... Oh, that, no, quite that, a few. that term can be used for people from any Th- this place. Is the problem. Like the, the argument is it should be okay to say it to somebody from Pakistan like you should be able to say somebody from Britain you're a Brit mm. but at the same time people were going to Cypriot people oh you're Paki fuck yeah. it's like, like no you can't you definitely yeah. can't fucking do that because, that it's, is... because it has a derogatory undertone mind yeah. you in my stand up set I talk about Brits in quite a derogatory way <laughs> yeah. um, but like, I, I was watching stand-up the other day, Daniel Muggleton, an, an, an Australian comedian. Yeah. And he was literally saying, he goes, you can rip the shit out of any white people. He's yeah. like, if you're white. He goes, that's yeah. fine. And then he goes, if you you're black. You don't have to be white, mate. Well, he goes, he goes, yeah, he goes, if you're black, you can rip the shit out of white people and black people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was like, he's like, white people can be the butt of everyone's I, jokes. I've never heard anybody, <laughs> when you say like, oh, my neighbour's a pole. Mm. nobody will turn around and go, you can't say Pole. That's that's horrible, you know, it's, it's derogatory. Yeah. Because it is short, Polish. Yeah. But again, you turn around, you say anything non-white and shorten it, even if it fits the label, if it's like, you know, that someone, oh, I, I, no, to be fair, I'm struggling to think of one now, which is acceptable. <laughs> but, yeah. I was going to say, my next one there is a jam for Jamaican. A jam? <laughs> <laughs> He's just out there jamming, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what Bob Marley was on about? Was like, We're jamming. I don't know, man. I hope you like jams, too. <laughs> Cranberry and raspberry. <laughs> now, you never know, mate. It could be anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. When was uh, the last time you were in an ambulance? Last time I was in an ambulance? Fuck, it'd be um, when I ah, had to go to the hospital because my mate shattered his ankle playing basketball. Oh, so and it wasn't even you in the ambulance. Well, you well, were I, in there with I him. I had to go there with him, yeah. but the best it was, me, I, 
haggling with the ambulance driver to take him to hospital to like oh because they'd come to check his ankle and like yeah it's absolutely smashed like he'd smashed it in two places and broken his lower leg as well and they're going like oh yeah he needs to go to hospital and I'm like, yeah he does and they went so uh, we're like knocking off in 20 minutes so can you take him and I went no you're a fucking ambulance driver <laughs> you've got to take this back to the hospital just like yeah but we'd be sitting around for an hour while they you know book him in and everything like, I couldn't give a fuck mate. <laughs> it's it's fucking like, it's smashed. yeah it's like it's like fucking it's like a concertina it's just waggling around all over it <laughs> he's screaming in agony going just fucking get me to hospital and they go well you know we want some fish and chips and the shop shuts at 10 so it's <laughs> <laughs> fucking assholes. Which ambulance station were they from? Call uh, them out, mate. Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury uh, ambulance station. Cool, yeah. Shrewsbury ambulance. Pull your socks up, mate. Oh, mate. Oh, the majority. This is, this is the other thing as well. And I do not blame people, but the NHS is fucked in that sense as well. There is ridiculous pressure on the people and it makes them grumpy and short-tempered. Mm. And they don't... Not that they don't want to do the job properly. It's just they've fucking given up. Mm. So you get attitudes like that. Maybe. Yeah. This is why we need a good <clears throat> kick in the dick and get it all. They need to be paid correctly. <sighs> they do and they don't. Because uh, a lot of people have got inflated opinions on what they do. Ambulance drivers are paid quite fairly. Mm. But at the same time, everybody always wants more money. Like uh, my day to day job, I can't, as I say, I can't tell you what I do and everything. But you fucking, get paid too much. I do. I get paid a lot of money for doing nothing, and people will hand in their notice going, I'm not paid enough. And it's like, mate... Doing your job? Yeah, you sit in a fucking van, mate, and shout at people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would do it for free. It's fucking... Yeah. I would do it for free? Yeah. Have it. you had any run-ins with, uh, with, with the general public recently? Oh, man, yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking <laughs> what's, been, what's been your best one? Uh, well, most recent one, I um, got a woman complaining at me for her bins not being emptied. Like literally getting violent with me, saying that she, she was going to fucking kill me if I didn't get her bins emptied. I was like, I'm not a bin man. What is your fucking problem? And then she's like, Well, you know, they've been sending me letters saying that unless I put my different recycling things into different bins, they won't take it. And I went, Well, then that's your answer. I was like, Just fucking sort your recycling. It's like, not my fucking job. I'm like, well, it's just going to stay there, isn't it? So she's threatened to run me over with a Range Rover. So I was like. Fucking hell, dude. What area was this in? Uh, this is in Oswest Street in Shropshire. Oh, my God. So you, you just work around Shropshire? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mainly do North Shropshire. Is there a lot of money in the area? Uh, there is and there isn't. There's like proper deprivation. I was going like my background where there was no fucking money at all. Yeah. And then you've got ridiculously wealthy people that just hold on to that money and... They live in Shropshire because it's like quite a nice little rural area. Mm. You know, you've got Cheshire on the one side and shit like that. It's, it's basically as well a nice little catchment for people who can't quite afford a really nice gaff in Cheshire. Yeah. I'll go, fuck it, I'm just going to live in uh, North Shropshire or save Shropshire. Fucking Ludlow. Ludlow is full of pompous, up their own ass cunts and I can't fucking deal with them. <laughs> like, oh, this, where are you from? Where are you from? And you go, I'm from Shropshire. Yes, yes, but where? But where? You go, which church? Which church? Is that north or south? You go, North Shropshire. Yeah. And you can just see them like fucking, it's like you've just said, I live in a fucking bin and I'm going <laughs> to rape your children. It's <laughs> 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 fucking uh, dicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. So, <laughs> I'm just imagining you dressed up as Os- Oscar the Grouch <laughs> living in a bin and raping dicks. <laughs> 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 what do you mean imagine it <laughs> I can just get my phone out and show you you're in you. green now you yeah. look a bit like Oscar the Grouch okay. as it is you haven't even done your oh this is Matty Shaw and welcome to the podcast oh I don't really do that shit anymore oh you, you stopped doing that everyone knows who you are well they know it's, who you are or me or what well yeah of course everyone knows who I am <laughs> everyone knows yeah. you're on registers yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to leave this fucking apartment. <laughs> I'm a dangerous man. Yeah. Um, but no, people know who you are because I realised I put your photo and your name in the title of the podcast. So I don't really need to be like, oh, hi, it's Donald Mackerel. Like, yeah, 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 Because yeah. can't say click on it, I already fucking know. And yeah, yeah, look yeah. Like. So... Podcasts know. are so fucking watered down as well now, isn't it? Like, just trying to find a podcast now... You've got every ropey cunt under the sun just doing a fucking... Like, well, so I've started doing one. It's mm. like, well, if there's money to be made, fuck it. I'll see if I can make there's it. There's not money to be made, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm starting to get advertising offers. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah. 
uh, can't say at the moment because at the moment I, w- I want it official before I put anything of theirs on my fucking podcast yeah. and advertise anything but yeah you do you get the odd person like saying I oh, you know I'll bung you X amount of pound a month if you just mention my fucking product on your podcast interesting see I've, I've, I have a ghost sponsor that pays for this to go up on um, like iTunes and Spotify and whatever but he specifically asked that I didn't mention his brand <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'll pay you not to mention it yeah. <laughs> and I was like okay um, so yeah if I mention it um, well fuck them really but yeah. <laughs> I won't do it because I said I wouldn't yeah. but yeah it's a very weird sponsorship agreement when the person's <laughs> paying you not to mention their product. Yes, right, and it's yeah. not like I was on here mentioning it every week and he's like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing custom. Yeah, I'm losing Fucking custom. Dick. I think he said that this podcast doesn't align with brand values. <laughs> <laughs> brand values. Yeah, oh, I don't know shit. what those are. So yeah, yeah, It okay. is what it is, mate. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you went to the football? I don't like football. Really? No, I don't watch it. Do you go to any live sport ever? Basketball. Okay. Yeah, uh, I watch basketball live. Uh, not British basketball because it's fucking atrocious. Mm. Uh, like I say, I play British basketball, so I know the level that you can play at, and even at the pinnacle of British basketball, it's fucking wank. Do you think you could have gone to America and played college basketball? <laughs> no, no, fuck no. My mate did it, uh, but when I was late twenties, um, I was helping like this sixteen-year-old lad learn mm. basketball properly. And he sort of said to me, oh, my friend, he's going to go and play for the England under-19s team. And uh, I'm going to go over to America with him and we're going to play college basketball together. And I went, okay, yeah, no worries. And I remember playing both of them in a one-on-one and I absolutely dicked him. I was like, if you are the future of British basketball, I fucking, what is the point? Why even attempt? Because like, you guys are fucking awful. Like, well, you know, we're going to go to America and we're going to fucking become stars. And within two weeks of this guy going to America, I sent him a message saying, how are you getting on, dude? He's like, I'm on the track and field team. I was like, I thought you were doing basketball. He's like, no, not a chance. Not a chance. Like, the shittest American players piss on our best British players. Really? Well, you look at the British basketball team where you've got people like um, Luol Deng, who's from, oh, I, think, I, th- I think he's from the Sudan, and he's our best player. You've got, like, Nadu Diaby uh, from Nigeria. But no, no, he's British. And it, that's the way the British basketball team runs. The actual British players are fucking shit. So there's no point. But is it because no money, time and effort oh, goes into it? there's nothing. They uh, had a little uh, investment in basketball when we had the 2012 Olympics. Mm. And um, our team automatically qualified, but lost all of its games. So then uh, Basketball UK just pulled out all funding and said, well, we're not going to fund it if you're going to keep losing. And it's like, yeah, but you don't understand. You've got... To fucking invest and train mm. people or else you're just going to have shit training shit and nobody interested in the sport and yeah. it's just going to be a continual cycle of wank yeah yeah and but yet, because england's known for football rugby which, and when's the last time we've won anything in football yeah not for a while yeah but because i think english people are just shit at sport is that a blackburn rovers top you've got on yeah it is mate yeah i love the rovers so, so, so the, you, you've admitted the place is racist and horrible, but you, just, you love it anyway. You just no, spread the word. I love, I love the football team. Yeah. Um, what what division are they in now? Uh, the championship. Oh right. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think the last time I followed football, they had won the Premier League. Blackburn Rovers did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that was the heyday back in the nineties. That's it. I think like did, did they have like Alan Shearer or something playing for them? To be honest, I wasn't alive at that point. Nah, but you know, there's a the point. You are like a fourteen-year-old lesbian. Aren't you? <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, <laughs> mate! <laughs> like, I don't know what to say to that. All I'm going to do is run my fingers softly through my hair. Yes. <laughs> and start a feminist fucking blog yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Have you come across any male feminists? Oh, mate, tons of them, and they need to go fuck themselves. Why? So you are not going to get any more fanny pretending to be a male feminist. Just be fucking normal. Just believe in equality and stop trying to do the whole, no, 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 we really should get less rights and we should get treated worse because blah, blah, blah. Hang on. Yeah. That's not a male feminist. That's that's it, that's insanity. Exactly, but that is what a male feminist tries to do, and like they try to do the whole oh fucking Manchester Comedy Store, uh, first time in forty years on National Women's Day, first time ever they're having a full female lineup on the London store and on the Manchester store, and instead of sort of going like oh this is happening blah 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 blah, Chawl 
did this fucking spread about like, oh my god, I can't believe that it's taken forty years to fucking do it, and like you know, oh every single weekend there's five spots available, and they still only give one to a woman. That's a twenty percent thing. It should be fifty percent. And then you go about three percent of the comedians in the UK are women. So you're saying that we should do positive discrimination to give somebody a chance who maybe doesn't deserve it and fuck over a whole group of people that do. It's mental. Mm -hmm. Give the spots to the people who are funny and have worked the hardest. Absolutely. And I wanted to make a point as well, um, because I love talking about women in comedy. It's one of my favourite things. And I, yeah. my gig has been touted as the most sexually undiverse gig in Manchester. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been accused of not booking enough women. Oh, I've, 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 had them, I've had them come for me. And I will say, I went to a night in Manchester... Open mic night, <coughs> exclusively women. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Now I went, and I've seen all of those women do very well at different times, at different gigs, and at different yeah. places. Okay, all very talented in their own right. That night was one of the worst nights of comedy yeah, yeah. I've ever watched because all that they wanted to talk about was the fact that they had finally been given a night. Oh. That was just for women, and they did all female-focused jokes, all, all, all just the same. It all just become everyone just doing the same. The same. If they'd just bit. done their actual sets, yeah. that they would just on a normal lineup. Yeah, it yeah. would have been so varied. It would have been so much more exciting. And the bits worked. Yeah, they, yeah. they know the bits work, and the bits have worked in lineups here, down south, up north, all over the place. They know those bits work, so why throw everything out and go, oh my god, I'm on an all women's lineup. Yeah. Let's talk about dating, let's talk about women's mental health, let's talk about emotions, and let's talk about how much we don't know about cars. Uh, you know, let's yeah. just let's just pick these. Let's like, reinforce the fucking stereotypes yeah, let's that just we're put complaining these tick about. Boxes. And then and then I spoke up and I was like, man, I did not enjoy that. And everyone was like, how could you not enjoy a woman's comedy night? And I was like, it's not that I didn't enjoy the women themselves. I was like, but what they spoke about wasn't yeah, the funny. The material was shit. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can say that about any comedy yeah. night. I've been to my I, own comedy night and walked out and said, fuck me, that was I, shit. My, my problem is as well, like as a promoter, you are encouraged in the same way that you've just said, where you'll get crowds of people calling you like a fucking misogynistic prick or something. Mm. You're encouraged to at least have one woman on the lineup. And so you cave in and you go, okay, well, you know, I'll try and pick some funny women. Nobody applies. So then you're having to hunt down people where you've got men applying and you're having to hunt down women. So you've got one woman on your bill. Then you finally get somebody and she's not very funny. And instead of somebody going, oh, well, at least she gave you her a spot. They go, well, really, you've got five spots. You should have two women on. You're going, oh, for f I can't fucking win. And what they're doing is they weaken the belief in women's comedy because... It's not just men. You'll have women going, oh shit, I can't stand women comedians. They're not very funny. Because the reason is, the ones that they're getting to see that are being forced onto these big lineups haven't done the Jews. They mm -hmm. haven't got funny sets. And like, there are fucking amazing female comedians there. Like, have you met Lindsay Santoro yet? No. F Birmingham based comedian. Absolutely fucking hilarious. Like, she sent me this audio clip of herself and I was pissing myself laughing <laughs> I was I, I had to like, my ex was getting changed like ready for a night out and I had to just stop her and she was getting all stressed and I was like no you've got to listen to this you've got to listen to this showed her funniest thing I've ever heard and she quite rightfully was getting gigs but at the same time she's been going like what six seven years mm. there are people that have been going for like ten minutes oh, yeah. exaggeration but maybe six months see I was speaking to Lindsay Davis right I love Lindsay Davis yeah Lindsay Davis yeah. is great and she was literally saying she was like the hardest bit for a female comedian is staying in those first two years because those first two years when you're not funny right yeah. trying to get booked and the only places that want you or the only places that will offer you gig are either really low or really high. And that sort of middle of the road area yeah, is yeah, sort yeah. of just overrun by blokes. So you're either a really good woman or you're bottom of the barrel woman. And she sort of did the thing about two years and then she's like, after two years, you sort of just like flip over and then you're sort of on a downward like trajectory. Oh, I thought she did really well lately. She is, she is. No, no, no. On a downward, like a, an easy downward. Oh, I see. You mean, I think downward. you were fucked. No, like, no, 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 no. So she's, she's like, now it's sort of smooth sailing. She's earned her respect and whatever. But she's like, 
the girls that she started with, they've all fallen off. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. None of them are there anymore. Yeah. It's the same with the blokes as well, but yeah. I think you notice it a bit more when you lose a lady. Yeah, yeah, you do. The worst bit is there's a woman called Teresa Farlow, who's uh, Northwest based. Mm. Uh, and she used to do a lot of really good gigs. Really funny comedian. And she's just dropped off the map. And it's like, well, that was one of my reliable people that I used to want to book. Mm. Gone there. And it's like, so if I don't want to look like a misogynistic prick, mm. and I've got to book a female comedian to make myself not look like a misogynistic I've prick. Just, I've just given up on listening to the people that have a problem oh, with the, it. Oh, genuinely, that's what I've got now. It's like, you can call me whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. The people who know me know me, and they know I'm not a dickhead. Yeah. So it's like, well, yeah, if you... It is hard when it's my own girlfriend telling me I have the most misogynistic open <laughs> mic <mind> night <laughs> in Manchester. <laughs> well, so if I would never turn around to a promoter and go, oh, you know, you just hate <clears throat> short people because that's why you're not booking me. Yeah. I just go, I'm not good enough. I need to fucking work on my set and mm. get better so that they have to book me. I don't like people who use that, like, because I've, I've told you in the past, like, I'm autistic. I don't have an autistic set. I've got nothing against people who do go out there and oh, I'm autistic, I'm autistic. But people said, oh, you should do that because you'll get more gigs. Like, Why? And I'm like, oh, you know, it's like a disability, isn't it? Like, well, that just cheapens my act. See, I have an Australian accent and I don't get any more gigs for being disabled. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird because you're New Zealand as well, isn't you? I know, so, I yeah. know. But you I are a proper Australian fucking accent. Lord of the Ring fucker. It's I know, <laughs> I know. I'm just like the Hobbit. Yeah, I've been following your podcast quite a bit. Have you? Yeah, I've noticed you're a master of different accents. <laughs> what do you mean? For example, give me a Birmingham accent right now. Oh, no. Come on, it's a Birmingham accent. Oh, you're right, love. What the fuck is I'm that? Gonna, I'm going to put you in the cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's like half Geordie, half Indian. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do accents. Oh, Liverpool. All right, lad. <laughs> What's this? What's this? It's the same accent. <laughs> fucking get us a cat <laughs> of fucking be <beak> clown. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> what you can... <laughs> oh, shit. Fucking hell. So it's literally a scout slash brummy who just speaks Chinese. <laughs> this is this fucking hell. What you now? <laughs> fucking hell. Sorry, the audio must be skipping there. <laughs> Oh my god, that's brilliant. That Why? Was... Hang on, what made you think I was a master of accent? Exactly, it's just every time you had anybody on, and they'd be, you'd be going, oh, so I met this guy from Manchester, and he was going, all right, mate. So I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm really good at doing my own accent. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> Other than that, I'm pretty funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now I can do a Manchester accent. <laughs> Ready? Go on. E, you right, our kid. No! <laughs> All you gotta do is say the word Manchester. Manchester. But instead, end it in all. Oh. So you go Manchester. Manchester. That's it. <laughs> Don't Manchester. Apparently, people from Manchester like the way I say Manchester. <laughs> Man. I'm like, I'm like Manchester. Someone told me to do an Australian accent. I've never tried it, but to do, do an Australian accent, you've got. Oh, Amber, shut up. You've got a squint. She saw a black person on the television. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She said, you've got to squint and pretend you're looking at the sun. And like, so you just do that and you sort of talk in yeah. yeah, that sort of, and it's like the whole... Try you, it now. Just, just, just be oh, like... Oh, everything's got to be a question as well. Yeah. You've got to lilt at the end, that sort of... Yeah. yeah. So it's got to be like, um, you know, just be like, bloody hell, Bruce, I've, I've lost my <laughs> way. I've lost my way to the billable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right, that's, that's, that's not like a... Yeah, that, that, so that, I'll that. do it for you, right? Bloody hell, Bruce, I've lost my way to the billable. <laughs> and I'll go, bloody hell, Bruce, I've lost my way to the billabong. I've been to the Matty Shaw School of Excellence. Uh, <laughs> Matty Shaw School of Excellence. <laughs> bloody goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, now bloody Australian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the best bit is you can't call me racist because I didn't say what accent I thought I was doing then it was Australian yeah exactly it's, um, yeah. Yeah. it wasn't a good one it's Perth yeah, it's, it was <laughs> Perth <laughs> <laughs> the funniest bit about Australia is whether you're in Brisbane or Perth it's like I don't know 3,000 kilometres in between the two accents exactly the same <laughs> yes. well, um, apparently in Poland they have one accent yeah yeah, I did not know this because... Um, in Australia there's one accent. Well, no, there's this slight differential 
Oh, it? Oh, Whereas in Poland, it is you have one way of speaking. That is it. Mm. And I tried to learn, like, because I used to work with Polish people. I tried to learn a few. Do you um, mean Poles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people of Polish descent. Yeah. So I tried to learn a few phrases and a few things that had helped me at work. And I always remember this guy called Artur going, just stopped me going, no, 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 no. I went, what? And he went, you speak Polish like a drunk Russian. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Were you drunk? No, no. Oh, right. But it's sort of like, he goes, so, you, you know, how, how do you say um, hello? Cześć. And you go, cześć. No, cześć. Cześć. Church, church. And you're stuck in this fucking loop going, I am saying what you are fucking saying. There is no difference. No, no, you say like Russian. Church, church. Fuck! It's, uh, fucking just. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go, hello, stick it up your arse, you fucking knob. Fucking Polish I'm trying my hardest. I'm not there going, you don't speak English correctly. Have yeah, you been to Poland? Slightly wrong. No, I'd love to go. Oh. Genuinely love to go. But I'm one of the guys, I can't go anywhere unless I'm going with somebody. Mm. And so nobody. Do you want to go together? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, mm. I need to get a passport first, which oh. on March 29th I'll probably be fucked. But yeah, I don't have a passport. But mm. Yeah, I'd love to go to Poland. Really I would. have a passport. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm guessing that's why you're here. I'm going to Sweden <laughs> in like three weeks to go skiing. Oh man, I've never skied before in my life. Nah. I've, I've got a mate who lives in Norway, and I want to go and see him. But um, again. He said, any time you get a passport, <laughs> just <laughs> fucking hop on a plane, you can stop at mine. So who's going to look after your dog? Uh, this is the thing. It was going to be the ex-girlfriend. Oh. Now, it's given me less reason to want to go on holiday than I've ever had before, which mm. is minimal anyway. I'll look after the dog. Yeah? I quite like it. There we go. But if you're coming with me to Poland... Oh, just... yeah. Cam will, <laughs> will look after the dog. Cam gets yeah. lonely. To be fair, I've got quite a few uh, neighbours and friends now that have come out of the woodwork to be a bit supportive to me because they've seen that I'm having a bit of a, a bit of a downward spiral. So they've sort of said, like, don't if you need anything, we'll come round and help, which is nice. How do you feel about pub publicising your downward spiral on Facebook? Oh, mate, you know me. I don't give a fuck. I think the more you can get people to help, the easier it's going to be for you. So rather than sort of sit there going, oh God, I feel really, really shit, and then coming out with the big bright face on, oh, the world is amazing, no, 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 tell people. Yeah. Just sort of say, look, I'm not feeling great, I need help, I'm not suicidal, I'm not going to fucking top myself, but I might become so if people don't start giving me a little bit of a help hand. It's not guilt tripping, mm -hmm. it's just, as I feel shit, if you are my friend, please help me, please come right, get me out of the house, take me on a walk. Take me to a pub. I'm, like, I'm not going to drink, but just fucking get me out. Have you stopped drinking altogether? <coughs> um, not altogether. Because you I'll... were a proper alcoholic. Oh, man. I, I, I was an alcoholic. Um, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was fucking... I was alcoholic at 14. That's shit, mate. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because where I grew up, there was nothing to do but drink. And I said, I come from a working class family where it's... it's in, I like, I'm sure you must have noticed the British culture is... Drink. You drink quite young. I was shocked that Barbie McGarvey told me that he he had a guy take it, borrow his bike, yes. go to the shop, yeah, get yeah. a two liter plastic bottle of cider, and they drank it when they were twelve. Yep. Yeah. What was your first getting pissed story? Um, I'd have been about twelve as well, and me and a guy called Martin Cooper stole a bottle of Perno from his mum and dad's <clears throat> drinks cabinet and went and sat on a local playground and just drank a bottle of Perno between ourselves. What is Perno? The uh, no, it's like a spirit, sort of like a vodka -y type spirit. But it's, it's, I can't remember what it's made out of, but it's ridiculously strong. And there was like a rumour that if you drink water the next day, you get pissed again. You don't. It's just, it tastes like aniseed, I think. Oh, is it like absinthe? <coughs> um, sort of, yeah. Absinthe is vile as well. Oh my God. You drank it straight in a park yeah. at 12. Yep. That would have been like drinking petrol. Yep. Yeah. And that, but again, that's what you do. And like, is it though? Even now, so I'm sort of saying like, you know, I need people to help me get the house, get me out the house and just get me socialising. Um, people just go, let's come down the pub. And you're like, yeah, but I don't want to drink, mate. And then they're not interested. Mm. Because that is that is their only coping mechanism is, yeah. let's go get pissed and then wake up and feel shit again. And let's go get pissed. I've got a friend like that, a fellow comedian who will call me almost every weekend and we'll just be like, what are you doing? Where are you? Are we going out? Yeah. And I'm like, no, mate, I've fucking got stuff on. I've got stuff on now. I've got stuff on tomorrow. Like, I don't drink or like, no. do anything anymore. I don't go out. And it's just like, I, f I hardly ever see this bloke now. Yeah. Because the only time he wants to do anything 
is go out. That's it. You get sh- you get shot out. So yeah. like uh, today, I, I well this weekend I've been stopping over at a comedian's house uh, up towards Leeds, a place called Rippenden. And, uh, Rippenden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not, not too far away. I've stayed in Rippenden. Yeah, it's quite at, nice, isn't at it? At the Malt House. Oh, right. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, it's not too far, really. So um, uh, he's just been taking me on like little country walks and, like, you know, get, oh shit, I've said the W word and I've got a dog in. Oh, <laughs> the dog's <laughs> head's just turned. Yeah, and no, Amber, we're not going yet. No. Oh, no. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, so um, that, that's all we've been doing is like just going off on treks yeah. around the country. You know, the countryside and like uh, does it really work if I say walk oh my oh, god yeah mate don't she'll go fucking bananas unbelievable yeah you know other words don't you like uh, you know sausage yeah. oh my and, you god know, chicken yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry to just derail your story but oh, right, that yeah. was amazing yeah yeah it's quite well trained but the only problem is that is like number one on her priority list it's yeah. the W word and then it's like food yeah so uh yeah, we're gonna have to calm you down now. Eh? Oh, you'll be all right. You'll be sorry. All right. No, no, it's cool. I just wanted to test it out. It really, <laughs> it really worked. Yeah, no, you'll be all right. That Amber, a, sit down. That is sit. a wind up if you if you're not actually going. <laughs> yeah. Sit on the chair, Amber. You'll be right. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll take you out when Matty does his next podcast. Yeah. yeah, that'll be good. We've got um, who have we got? We've got Douglas Carter. There's Doug Carter and. Dialis, from what I know, maybe you might have Eric Rushton. He's supposed to be headlining tonight. Is there? I fucking hope so because he's amazing. I but, know. Um, yeah. I put him down as the next big thing in comedy. If not, Dougie Carter. Dougie is making massive waves. He's mm. like fucking Midlands Comedy Awards New Comedian of the Year. We, was that the same competition where you were second place? <laughs> yeah. And he was. I first? was fucking runner up. I would like to say he got it off nepotism, but he didn't. He's just a better comedian. Oh. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just, were you Donald or Mr. Badger? Both. Okay. Yeah, so uh, they, they counted all votes for Donald and all votes for Mr. Badger as one. And right. I come second, but I don't know, fuck it. I don't care. We're both getting paid work. That's all that matters. That's good. Yeah. So what's been your, like, funnest gig since I last saw you? Or your weirdest gig? Did um, you have to kick some people out for selling watches? No, no, that was um, a gig that I like going to at the Albion in okay. Warrington. Yeah, there were some guys who turned up, took the microphone off the MC and tried to flog fake watches. <laughs> and we were like, is this a bit? Are these comedians? And it wasn't. It was like, because the police came in afterwards and were like, have you seen these people? They've stole, because they robbed a house nearby as well. So they'd robbed a house, then decided to go around the corner and try and f- sell safe, uh, fake watches that they'd got inside their coats to people, even though they'd got stolen goods on them as well. What? Hang on, so they didn't steal the watches? The nope. watches were a separate... The, the watches were fake watches that were trying to sell pub to pub and sort of as a little bit of opportun- opportunism uh, in between the house pubs. Yeah, they just sort of like, oh, there's nobody in this house and the curtains are open and they've got a PS4 there. Let's just break the window and fucking nick a load of shit. Oh my God. Yeah. I was in Ashton the other week, right? And yeah. there was this girl on a bike and I was just walking, right? Just walking, doing nothing else. She comes up right next to me on the bike, stops and goes, Hey you, do you want to buy a polo watch new in the box? <laughs> I was like, no thank you. She was like, alright then. <laughs> and then just got on a bike and rode off. Fucking hell. And I was like, baby I do want to buy a polo watch. I didn't ask enough questions, I just panicked. I was just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. no. But even then, you never know, it might be at that point that you go, yeah, yeah, sure. And you pull out some money and they go, you're not getting the watch give me your fucking money and then pull a knife on you so mm. it's probably best to go no I haven't got any money no. yeah I, I didn't have any money that was the thing but I was like where's the watch like maybe I could have you know yeah yeah I don't Mugged know her. yeah <laughs> I don't know like, where's the watch bit fucking dog eats dog yeah, mate that's right yeah. I didn't have I didn't have a 20 quid note on me but I did have a blade <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no but what's what, what's been happening with you at gigs crazy uh, gigs really really good at the moment getting some really really good gigs in um I did a weird one on Friday. You know, it's just set out like a conference. So it's like tables with like eight seats around them. So you've got at least three people with their backs facing you. Mm. Yeah, and there's like a long distance between the stage and the people performing. And the guy running the night, as in the guy booking the comedy, said to him, this is not going to work. And it didn't, apart from Mr. Badger. Mr. Badger fucking stormed it. Because I just got up there and did songs. So it, just, it was like a bloke doing funny songs. I didn't do my set, really. I just 
took the piss out of a few people, took the piss out of the venue and did a couple of songs and everybody thought it was brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, and then the headliner came on and they fucking talked over the top of him like a bunch of dicks. Who was the headliner? Oh, God, Craig Dealey, I think his name was. Right. Uh, he was doing really well, literally two jokes in, people just gave up and said, blah, 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 over the top of him. Uh, they were talking over the top of the MC, talking over the top of everything. They were just literally there. Because I think the one line I said was like, I'm not going to do too long because we've got food at half past nine and everyone went Wee! and that's all they were there for was like pie and fucking gravy so yeah we got our pie they paid 20 quid for pie and gravy and who were disco. they? oh it was um, was it a rugby club? it was a football team and they were doing like a fundraiser so they could get like reduced costs for next season I, I don't know the name of the team it's like some amateur jobby but yeah fuck it money's money so I just went yeah fuck it take the cash and uh, you guys have a shit gig. So okay. did um, <clears throat> did you get any of the food? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I wasn't meant to, but I just fucking queued up and got myself some pie. Fuck them. Was it good? Yeah, it was lovely. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're talking shit about it like it was a bad pie. Oh, no, no. But you wouldn't pay 20 quid for it. Yeah, I get so, you. So, yeah. I, I always find it weird where like sports clubs and that have fundraisers and then they invite all the people that are a part of the club anyway to come. Exactly. It's like yeah. you might as well just give us the money. Yeah. Like yeah. You might as well just pay more for your fees. But it was. It was people associated with the football club and like local people. Mm. And it was sold as like, to be fair, the band that were on afterwards were fucking outstanding. It was like they'd got a DJ but with like a, a guy playing like live like electric bongos over the top and a saxophone player and they're basically doing like a full Ibiza set but like with live instruments and the DJ it was fucking outstanding so really yeah really really good that I said you should have just fucked like even though it would have lost me money like, you should have just fucked off the comedians and just done that just have a meal then have this fucking band on for like an hour and a half and that'll sort it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Everyone would just be pilled up having a fucking great time. Yeah, that's like, right. Yeah. It's just a fucking drug den, mate. That's yeah, the yeah. problem with this country is no one can enjoy anything fucking so. No, no, that's the thing. Is that, like, as I say, I don't drink, don't do drugs. Uh, and now my mental state is actually getting a little bit better. Because mm. I used to. But yeah, my, my mental state is a hell of a lot better than it used to be. And you just look at people going like, you literally think you can't have a good time without this stuff, and it's the stuff that's making you ill. Can I talk to you about something? <clears throat> Go for it. Do you have anxiety? Yeah, massively. That's why I can't leave the fucking house. Okay. In With your anxiety, do you often put on music or have the TV on or have something on as like noise in the background yep. to sort of drown out your own thoughts? Yeah, and like to go to sleep, I have to have like a podcast on or uh, fucking, oh God, I'm so hippie, uh, Yoga Nidra which is like relaxation yoga so I have to put okay. that on in the background to chill out too or I'll stick some on like Netflix I'm not watching it it's just background noise just background noise yeah, and, and does that help your mind not to have to process its own thoughts yeah, yeah which it just goes around in fucking circles so, right um, yeah so question for you have you ever smoked weed to combat oh, this no not to combat it but I okay. used to smoke weed but smoking weed to try and get over anxiety is the dumbest fucking idea I've ever heard of. Right, okay. Yeah. What about what about if it, if it worked for you um, it, in terms of it, it sort of, if what about if it did though um, and it sort, of, <laughs> it sort of calmed down the thoughts in your head? Um, I, I think it would only be temporary. I can't imagine a state where that would work. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a bit like people who drink to go to sleep. Yeah. And it's like, well, you dehydrate yourself. You don't get a proper sleep anyway, and you'll probably wake up having to have a drink of fucking water. Same with if you goes. wake up and you've been high, you don't get the same level of sleep. Because no. you're in like a fake sleep, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. not actually an actual sleep. And you yeah. wake up and your muscles are all stiff because your whole body has relaxed. Yeah. And you've just gone... Well, like this weekend, as I say, uh, stopping at my mates, I've had the best sleep I've had in a long time. And it's just by <clears throat> engaging my brain, by talking to people, going on the W word that I can't say in front of the dog, mm. but doing that and knackering myself out a bit and just sort of like, I don't know, having fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it just clears all doing the shit Doing things in your with head. your day. Yeah. Having yeah, yeah. a purpose and someone who actually expects something from you. That's it. Rather than just sitting there watching shit telly, then going out and getting pissed and mm. going, oh, well, at least I've got a crap job I hope tomorrow. <laughs> 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 That's why I quit my job on Thursday, man. Oh, you quit your job? Absolutely. Good yeah. lad. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just went in and I said to my boss, I said, I just cannot do this anymore. Well, I'm, I, I don't know if I can say on that. Yeah, fuck it. Nobody even work listens. Uh, I 
sent my boss a message just saying like I can't work in this basically they've got me working in an area where I've got two ex-girlfriends who like mentally abused me <coughs> one physically as well and um, they got me working in this patch but they moved me across after I split up with the second girlfriend I was like so you you knew that there were two people there that could cause me mental discomfort and you decided to make it my permanent place of work and I'm like well you know if you don't like it leave so I went to see Occupational Health, and Occupational Health said, like, look, this is stupid. Put him back in his old patch, and it's been two and a half years now. So, what was it? Be about a week and a half ago, I just couldn't go to work. I just felt that bad. It was like, just the thought of going to work made me want to fucking top myself. And I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. So I went off ill, and then just sent my boss a message saying, like, you know, you, you haven't done anything. I'm not coming back. So I've left it at that. It's like, well, if, if you want to pull your finger out and actually stop being a dick and put me in an area that I don't feel like top of myself yeah. <laughs> while I'm working there, which so is it's just, like a, it's like certain postcoded area or whatever, like certain yeah. suburbs. Yeah, it's it's basically I work in North Shropshire, and I could either be northwest or northeast. Uh, northwest is where my two exes live and work. Northeast was where I live. And it's really nice and really picturesque, and I know the area. I'm comfortable there. You know, who's I, I, working in the northeast then? A guy whose dad is quite high up in oh. uh, yeah in my job, who literally came and they're like, oh well, you know, we're just going to train him in your section because you've managed to get your section running smoothly, so we can show him how to do the job optimally. And it was like, all oh, right, no worries. And then they just left him there. And I was like, oh, well, you know, he does live there. And I went, so do I. And he actually lives closer to the area that you're now making me work in. So it didn't make any fucking sense. And it was just um, like nepotism. It's just a case like, well, yeah, but his dad, his dad. Well, fuck his dad. (laughs) Fucking, what would you rather have? A a bloke going, I'm not very happy because I don't get to work next to my dad. Yeah. Or a guy going, I'm going to kill myself, you fucking mongs. Is this, it's government job, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, or council or whatever. Yeah, council. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, do you think, have you had normal jobs before? Oh, like fuck in yeah. companies. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. think the nepotism is worse in government council jobs? Worse. I, I've done everything from family-owned businesses where you don't get paid very much, but you get treated <coughs> really, really well, mm. to huge bloody you know FTSE 100 companies that uh, treat you like shit, but you know where you are. You know you're fucking scum. You know that's not going to change. The council pretend that they're going to treat you well and then just fuck you over in front of your own eyes and don't care about you. And it's the whole like, well, you know, what do you expect us to do? You don't even get paid well for it because all the councils are fucked. So you're not even making big money. Somebody is. Like, uh, you know, somebody's there taking a large paycheck for doing fuck all. But on the ground level, you get no money and you get treated like shit. But there's positives to it. And that's what's keeping me going on that front. So otherwise, I'd have just left my job. But it's a case of, no, 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 I, you know I'm... You know what I think we should do? What's that? You should quit your job indefinitely, and me and you should open a donut shop. A donut shop? Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. a vape store. That's yeah, well, isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Fucking vape shop. I've quit vaping. Oh, good lad. Cause, As of yesterday. Oh, man. Honestly, I, the, the, I loved your podcast. The most annoying thing was that every three seconds... <laughs> Haven't you yeah. noticed there was no vape? I know, it was like, fuck it up. <clears throat> um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you off mic what I did just earlier. Um, but yeah. we'll wrap it up here. Who cares? Because I want to tell you. Did you punch a child in the face? No, no. <laughs> I just got, <laughs> I got drunk on the vape. <laughs> 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 just fucking <laughs> hey, I <I'm> don't <gonna> come. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yes, we we will be back with. Craig and Die. Is it oh, Die or Cra- Dee? Craig uh, can't make it. Oh, then. not Craig. Doug. Sorry. Yeah, Doug. Fuck. Doug and Die Ellis. Is it well, Craig Dixon who we're having a go at? Uh, having a go at? Yeah, for not being here. Oh, no, no, no. Cra- Craig uh, can't make it. He's got family commitments. Fuck your family. Craig. No. <laughs> he's got a little newborn baby. So oh, he's, right. he's been. Okay. I do like babies. I, I don't. I'm not a fan. Really? No, I don't like kids. They can go fuck themselves. But I understand when people have kids that they want to spend time with them. <laughs> yeah. Me and my dog, for example. So, uh, yeah, no, we've got Doug Carter, uh, who is fucking ace. Di Ellis, who's brilliant. And also the token woman on your lineup tonight. So, <laughs> yay! She's bloody lucky she's got a spot. This because, is it, uh, yeah. 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 Fucking, uh, normally don't book fucking split asses. Everyone. <laughs> split asses! Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> 
It's a derogatory term for a lady. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, Fuck yeah, me yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not expecting to hear split asses today. Well, you know, this is, is what Amber happens when you ass. book the most misogynist comedian in the UK. Oh. How dare you? That is, that is terrible. Well, we're, yeah. we're going to have a few women in the audience tonight, so hopefully... Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I with should the send knitting and the shoes. Yeah. Oh, and their hair. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who do they think they are? How terrible. Well, we're going to continue, um, you know, complaining about the fairer <laughs> sex. Um, but thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And uh, thank you for coming all the way here, Donald. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's all right. I was only around the corner. You're a superstar. <laughs> give, us, give us a big smile and tell us that you're going to be happy. I am going to be happy. From the happiest man in England, <laughs> good night. <laughs>